Now, I have to ask you, this is this is the hardest hitting question I'm going to ask you on this interview, okay. right? And this is what people always talk to us about, and I will bet that will be the number one comment on this video. Why is there that big, like, air dam in the front on these off-road models, right? Because that is the one part of the vehicle that's not very off-road worthy. This is a 2016 Chevy Colorado with the Duramax and the Z71 package. In other words, it's the off-road truck with the diesel. So coming up next on the fast lane truck, I had a chance to chat with Mike Simmons, the global performance manager for all GM trucks, about this truck and about what GM was thinking when they built and designed it. You know all about this brand new Duramax, uh, hopefully. All right, <laughs> all right. Let's get the uh, important numbers out of the way because that's what people care about: uh, torque and horsepower. Right? It's 369 pound-foot of torque. That's then? correct. Which is 500 newton meters and 181 horsepower. That's correct. All right. And payload capacity is what 7,700 and 7,600 based on the the trailer and uh, right trailer trailer capacity is capacity, 700, yeah, yeah 77 yeah. for two wheel drive 76 for four wheel drive correct. And payload I want to say 15. I don't know. I want to say 1560. I think that sounds about right. I we'd have to we'll have to that. confirm that. Yeah. Um, so those are the important numbers, um, but. I think people want to know kind of the, the story behind those numbers. Now, this engine came out of one of your trucks that was in Thailand, is that right? But you just can't take a truck engine from Thailand and transplant it in America and, you know, call it a day, right? Yeah, we we did a lot of work. Um, and first of all, it's a very, it was a very capable engine. You know, the horsepower, the power numbers were there. Um, our, our mission was how do we refine it to the for the North American market? And that's from a, a, mostly from an NRV standpoint. And so we did a lot of work with our, our powertrain um, partners to not only address the base engine for noise, but also the path into the vehicle. So things like uh, driveline attenuation, um, the acoustic package uh, on the vehicle. You know, how do we make sure that uh, it's a really refined, pleasing, uh, experience for our customer and, and, and I'd like to say that when you're driving this at, at highway speed it's hard you're hard-pressed to know that you're in a diesel engine yeah you can really hear that kind of percolator diesel clatter when you're outside but in here yeah you can't hear anything and that was our that was our goal you know we knew we had to be very good in this market to uh, to be the uh, as good as the best in class for uh, for noise performance on a diesel engine and that was our mission and I'm pretty proud of where it, it turned out. Now, how about, of course, the big topic now is uh, how clean it is. Have you guys cleaned it up? Did you have to do a lot of work uh, to get it to pass EPA certification? We, um, that's a better question for our, our powertrain folks right. that are responsible for this. I will tell you that um, we have a lot of experience with diesel, um, diesel after treatment systems uh, with our heavy duty diesels. Um, and that all that technology was applied to this. We have a, a diesel exhaust fluid system that uh, we've spent a lot of time, a lot of hours on uh, working and perfecting. And uh, this truck has that, and we're, we're very confident we're uh, uh, we'll meet all the requirements. Yeah, I just uh, learned that you're going to get to test a truck in real world driving conditions, not just on the dyno, because of what happened with Volkswagen. So. That's going to make it uh, interesting. Um, it, it certainly will. Yeah, I don't know the story behind that. So um, there's uh, there's a developing story there that I probably probably can't speak to. The, the thing about diesels, obviously, is they're heavier. Right. So this is a heavier engine than, than the equivalent, uh, I think it's a 3.6 cylinder, yeah, 3.6 so, liter, that's in the uh, regular. So this diesel, this 2.8 liter uh, Duramax has a cast iron block yep. where uh, our gas engine is aluminum, so it is heavier. I would say it's uh, roughly 
a little less than 200 pounds more. It's also turbocharged. Yeah, it's turbocharged, yes. Um, so one of the, the challenges there is we had to go in and, and retune the, the vehicle for that added mass. And so this is a whole new uh, shock package on this vehicle, tuned specifically for the diesel. Um, I th I'm really happy how it turned out. It's a very, very pleasing drive down the road or even off-road as we're going to see here. We have a, an awesome line of accessories available for these vehicles and our accessory group does fantastic in staying on top of the latest and best accessories. Trail Boss basically takes some of those and integrates them into a package that uh, um, not only does it look very good and handsome but it's also very capable off-road and as you enter a grade when you hit about a 10% uh, downgrade whatever speed you're going it'll hold you at that speed the rest of the grade. You can adjust that speed by either the accelerator or the brake and whatever you brake to it'll hold you at that speed or accelerate to. Um, or we've set it up so that you can use the up and down uh, cruise, cruise control, control buttons yeah. to adjust that speed as well. So this is one area I wanted to say that to you before you got here. This is one area that you could uh, experience Good, this. Uh, yeah. I, by the way I did talk to the numbers guys and they said that the Trail Boss package, if you were to separately buy it, would be $7,000. And if you get it as a package, $6,000. Okay. So that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, what, that's, what you guys, that's what you guys told me. I'm just going with that. <laughs> I'm, ve I'm very thankful I don't have to deal with cost numbers. <laughs> I, I get asked all the time uh, how much this costs or is. Like, I, I have no idea. Right. <laughs> yeah, I've talked to another group for I'm, that. I'm slowing it down now using the cruise control. And so I'm holding it at three miles an hour. Yeah, it's very capable. Now, I have to ask you, this is, this is the hardest hitting question I'm going to ask you on this interview, okay. right? And this is what people always talk to us about, and I will bet that will be the number one comment on this video. Why is there that big, like, air dam in the front on these off-road models, right? Because that is the one part of the vehicle that's not very off-road worthy. That air dam is, a, is an aerodynamics enabler for us. It helps, I mean, it's substantial enough that uh, it's not something that we can remove because we need it for, for aerodynamics, for fuel economy. Um, it is easily removed with a few uh, have you tried it? screws. It's not too hard to remove. Have you tried it? Um, I've, I've taken them off. Yeah. yeah, we've taken them off. They're not that easy to remove. No, okay. I just saw a tarantula walking across. Actually, I just ran over a tarantula yeah, walking across a... the trail. And you come up to the trail, right, and you got to lay down under the truck with tarantulas and spiders and, you know, what else. It's not that easy to remove. Okay. Yeah, you need like a little, um, you know, like a little grommet maybe or something. Okay. Um, but, the idea, though, is to make it removable yeah. and for the off-roader. A lot of them take them off, leave them off. It does definitely help you with aerodynamics. Um, no, I mean, I, give it. I, I, I completely get why you would want that. It gives you better fuel economy. It makes it much more uh, fuel efficient. But on the Z71 package, it would seem like that would be something you would either want to make removable. And then if you do remove it, you know, where do you put it? Right, and you got this big air dam that you got to throw in the back of the uh, bed or in here, right? It's not, and you got screws. It's just not an elegant engineering solution. Okay, we'll leave it at that. I'll, 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 take, I'll, that I'll, I'll take that. Appreciate to, that. Take that back to your guys. Appreciate that. That's I'll what we hear that. all the time. Um, so this truck is equipped with our auto automatic transport or T case. Yep. So uh, there's basically three modes. You can go uh, auto, which is basically an on-demand. Uh, four, four wheel drive. Uh, we also have four, four high and four low that you can lock it into those, and uh, that's basically it. Um, it's uh, the same as what we offer on our base truck, and we we feel very very capable in the off road. Now, when you lock it, can you lock the diffs, or do you uh, are they open diffs? They're open. open. The, the rear has a um, a G80 type rear locking differential. Um, but the, uh, the front the front's open. open. Okay. Yes. You know, the one thing we always find with trucks is they're incredibly off-road capable. They're probably the most off-road capable machines you can buy outside of like dedicated Jeeps, right? Wranglers. Uh, but the one downside, of, of course, if you're seriously off-roading, is a breakover angle because they're so long. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, they're really good. 
the other, oh, there's one other downside. If you're looking at like a Silverado, it tends to be too wide, right? This is nice because it's, it's much narrower. It's easier to get in and out of tight situations. Right. This is almost like a rally course to be kind of fun to come flying through here at, at speed. Right. You guys do that when we leave? When the journalists leave, you go flying through this? Uh, <laughs> not allowed to say what we do. <laughs> Especially not on camera. Huh? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> now, the suspension feels really uh, well dampened. You know, I mean, we're on some kind of loose rocks right now. I, I don't feel like I'm getting too bounced around. I feel like uh, I can kind of tell what the wheels are doing as much as you can off road. Um, yeah, it's one of the challenges of uh, of trucks when you're tuning the suspension. You, you obviously want it to ride very comfortable on on the road. Yeah, of course. Um, well, when, you know, they're two diametrically opposed things, right? What, what you need to do off-road is the exact opposite you need to do on-road. Right, exactly. And then we have the added thing of, of having to handle a load, a payload, yeah. and pull a trailer. And there's some pretty stringent requirements around trailer handling. So it's a, it's a pretty uh, complicated puzzle that we try to optimize for all. And, and uh, very happy with how the Colorado has come out in, in all those situations. What's really nice, if I can make a comment, what's yeah, really nice about the, the diesel and this kind of thing is, you know, it's a slower speed course, you get a little bit of, we're going to get into some pretty steep descents, that available torque is is there for you, you know, I mean, if you get into a, a steep uphill or a steep downhill grade, that diesel torque, you can obviously right away know you've got what you need to climb that grade where... Well, that's um, what... It's funny that you say that because I was just thinking about that. When you were telling me about the fact that it has a hill descent control, I was wondering if actually the exhaust brake <laughs> would work as a kind of a ghetto <laughs> yeah, hill descent. I, I don't think at these low speeds you're going to get a lot of exhaust brake. And grade shifting? Yeah. 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 If a, I put in tow haul mode? Yeah. <laughs> well, tow haul and exhaust brake are actually together on the Colorado. Also, when you we've, put when we've you integrated put one, the two, yeah. 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 Disable the uh, traction control. Do you also disable the stability control in this? Can you turn all that off, or is that um, is that is it always kind of on just a little bit in the background? Because sometimes we find that um, you know this the traction control can get in the way of off-roading because you need wheel spin, and it won't give you wheel spin. Right. I gotta uh, remember the answer here. All right. So you can you can turn the stability track off with one push. Yep. You can push and hold. Well, let me try this. Let's try. So now it's off, it says TC off. If you push and hold it, yeah. I think, no, what does it say? Now it's just completely off. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You still have ABS. Right. But you've turned off traction and stability track. That was a little too fast, sorry. Now it will re-enable re itself above uh, 35 miles an hour. So when you get back on the highway, it'll turn itself back yeah. on. So with a, um, as a safety feature with a kind of a higher G vehicle, which this isn't a real high G, you know, mid-sized right. truck, but, um, but we, don't, okay. we don't want to leave it off in a yeah. situation where someone might need it. So. No, because there, there are a lot of situations where actually a little bit of wheel spin, uh, trying to crawl up, especially st steep rocks, is, is good to have. And so when, um, and actually in snow as well, so we've actually encountered situations where you can get in a car and if you're on a uh, slip enough road, the car will not move, right? Not because there's no power, just because the electronics think that there's thinks that there's no traction, right? And so you floor it, and the car just sits there. And if you can't disable it, you're like, oh, well, I guess I'm not going anywhere, right? Well, as we uh, as we tune our traction control, that's one of the things we look for is to make sure that you don't get in a situation where you're on ice and you need to move, you know, pulling out into traffic or whatever. So it's one of the factors that goes into the tuning of that system. complete TFL off-road review on this truck but you're gonna have to wait till we go to Colorado because well on this GM program it's 
time to hit the trail and go back to Colorado. So click on me if you want to see more 2016 reviews and don't forget to subscribe for a new truck video at least every week. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Truck. Check out tfltruck.com for more news views and everything you ever wanted to know off-road previews. See you next time. Ciao. Thank <laughs> you.